Well, it is the show that has its pulse on everything that's happening in the world, entertainment-wise or social-wise. It is Daily Mail TV, part of DailyMail.com. And who better to keep us up to date on what's happening is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Thomas Roberts. How are you, Thomas? Brad, I'm really great, and it's so nice to talk to you. Uh, I'm very excited to be here, and I know we've been trying to make this happen for a minute, so I feel blessed to have this time. So, And I do, too, because... You know, I watch you guys here on the Evening Times. It gets me up to date of what's happening with the things happening around the world, especially in our entertainment world. But you guys do with all types of issues. So give people a little bit more background about the Daily Mail TV. Oh, gosh. Well, the show, uh, we are now in our fifth season. Uh, and we are a, uh, I like to call it the TV dinner, Brad. You know, as we were growing up as kids, you had the TV dinner and you had the meat and you had the vegetable and you had the brownie. And some nights you would start with the brownie, you know, because it's all in front of you. And other nights you'd start with the meatloaf or other night you have your vegetables first. You know, and that's what I think about the show, because we get to work beautifully with uh, our, our, you know, our, the Daily Mail side, uh, DailyMail.com, most read newspaper in the world, and get to curate the best stories and kind of cherry pick what works for us. And then what translate to, translates to TV, uh, you know, the stuff is all compelling. And most of the time we have great exclusives, too. And right now... As the world is watching, uh, you know, the Ukrainian, uh, the, the Ukrainian people have all of our hearts and all of our attention right now as we're watching what's taking place with, with Russia. And we're trying to follow the beats out of Washington, D.C. as closely as possible, as well as Belarus and uh, everywhere in between. Because I think the bigger story going forward, once this does come to a conclusion, is the refugee crisis. And, uh, you know, we're seeing already a 2% flee of the population in Ukraine, and that's predicted to go even further. Uh, so I think we need to really prepare for what that humanitarian crisis means to our global, uh, you know, our, our global population. Yeah. And what's also very important, as you said, that you're keeping people up to date, what's going on. But I'll tell you, Thomas, what I like, too, is that you also give people a break from the hard news after you guys get through that. And that's with the entertainment news that you keep us up to date on. And there's a lot coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks with you guys. Um, and, and we go from movies being made to people celebrating anniversaries, some good, some bad. Um, and so that's one thing I want to touch upon with is that I can't believe it's going to be 34 years since uh, this, uh, how can we say, um, live soap opera unfolded on TV. Uh, you're talking about uh, the Long Island Lolita, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, it's 30 years later. Uh, you know, obviously we were not around. We weren't born. Uh, when this happened, Brad, uh, but uh, no, I remember it very well, and this was what we all were uh, transfixed by, uh, but we catch up with uh, Mary Jo, um, Mary Jo Barafuco. She was the housewife that was uh, shot uh, by Amy Fisher, the 17-year-old Amy Fisher, uh, that was having an affair at the time uh, with Mary Jo Barafuco. Uh, Amy went and knocked on the house uh, in Long Island, and Mary Jo opened the door and, and took a bullet to the head. Uh, you know, there are, and the, the consequences to Mary Jo's life, Brad, have been uh, really, really profound. But in catching up with her now, in this exclusive that we have, uh, she talks to us about, don't feel sorry for me. And she is just kind of no nonsense and is really, really, really impressive because uh, her last name is Connery now. She goes by Connery. Uh, so the uh, identifier of, you know, Butterfuco has. Uh, uh, long since past, uh, serving her and what she needs in her life. But uh, at 66 years old, uh, she is really kind of turned onto a whole new chapter as they've lived out on the West Coast for a very long time. But uh, she's turned into a, a really different person and doesn't have ill will uh, towards Amy. Like, really looks at it through a different perspective. And it was, it's fascinating to get her perspective at this time because I don't know if I'm good enough a human being uh, if I lived through that, to feel the way she does. Yeah, it, it's just uh, just a story that you know you got to go back and, and learn about for those that don't know, and then see how you guys are are doing the story going forward, which is amazing. I know we're supposed to wrap up, but I got to ask you because um, I'm hearing that Madonna is writing her own movie. <laughs> yes. All right. So the Material Girl is involved with having her life, you know, made into a biopic, and I think that. We all know about Madonna's foray into acting and her movies. And, you know, maybe this will be the one, Brad, where she really knocks it out of the park uh, because it's about herself. And uh, I think Madonna is, can 
compellingly honest about most things, but she is part of the screenwriting team to put this together. Uh, but now the casting of actresses, uh, this is one of the bigger, juicier parts in Hollywood, probably career-defining roles that any young actress uh, could land. And so there are some different names, uh, but you had, a, you had an interesting pick. Uh, and I, yeah. I think it was Miley Cyrus uh, that you said would be a good person to play Madonna. Yeah, I did. I, I, to I totally agree with you. I think she would be great. Um, but there are four other women involved. But I will just give you, because I know we're tight on time, but I will just give you the, uh, the one that I like the best, uh, Julia Garner, who we all love as uh, Ruth Langmore on Ozark, who's right now, you know, uh, Anna Sorokin and Inventing Anna on Netflix right now. And she's got the tooth gap. Yeah. You know, Thomas, I'm going to throw someone else in there, but I saw where they're thinking about uh, two people from my favorite show on HBO Max, you know, Euphoria. I mean, those two ladies... Yeah. Coming in in the play yeah. too, uh, you know, talking Barbie about Barbie Ferreira. Those, yeah, yeah, Barbie Ferreira, and uh, the other one. Don't let her name escape me right now. It, uh, but it is Sydney Sweeney. Yes, uh, those two ladies are uh, also in the mix, and they're and they both, Brad, compellingly have Madonna-esque features, where you could see how they would be transformed, but they don't have the tooth gap. Yeah, you know, I, so. Maybe Madonna later in life. They could be her later in life, but not early Madonna. Yeah. And, and you know what I like about Daily Mail TV, Thomas, is that you got two guys here actually talking about, you know, the gossip or whatever's going on in Hollywood and around the world. And it's usually the ladies, but that's what Daily Mail TV does. It gets everybody involved of, you know, of course, the topics that are happening. No, it does. And I mean, I'm, I'm perfect for this job because, I mean, when I started out in TV in 94, you know, my big selling line was, you know, telling people I, I can... Uh, you know, I can tell you what's going on with pop culture, or the soap operas and all that stuff. And then when we got into the 2000s, uh, you know, it was like, I can tell you what's going on from Pine Valley to Pakistan. You know, and I still can, but we're not really in Pakistan so much, and Pine Valley doesn't exist, but I've still got it covered. You do. You do. And Thomas, I appreciate you coming on. I know you're very busy uh, and being here with us. And again, uh, I'm going to let you go in because there's still a lot of news you're covering. So I appreciate it. And uh, you can catch the Daily Mail TV right here on AZTV7 at 430. And also you can catch DailyMail.com on the web. So you can do both there. So Thomas, thanks for joining us this morning. Brad, thank you so much. It's an honor. I really appreciate it. And uh, all your folks there at AZTV, thank you so much. Uh, we are so lucky to be with you. Thank you. Thank you.